everyone, I'm Rebecca and welcome back to my sewing room. It is time for a new project and a new holiday project at that. I had so, so much fun with Gunny Saxoween over Halloween, which was hosted by Gwen's Shenanigans and obviously everybody else did too because A, you guys loved that project and those videos and B, everyone who participated has pretty much decided that we all want Christmas versions of our Halloween Gunny Sax dresses and hence Gunny Saxmas. So today begins Gunny Saxmas. I had decided that I was going to make a Gunny Saxmas dress and then I went to Joanne's and somehow walked away with fabric for two Gunny Saxmas dresses. So this is going to be the start of the first one. This is the true Gunny Saxmas dress as in a Christmas themed dress that is done in the style of the Gunny Sax dresses from the 1970s and 80s. If you're not familiar with Gunny Sax, uh, do check out my Gunny Saxoween video down below where I talk a little bit more about Gunny Sax and also I will have the playlist both for Gunny Saxoween down below as well as Gunny Saxmas. So as I mentioned, I did get fabric for two dresses. One is definitely the Christmas themed one. And then the other one is actually, frankly, Gunny Sax Winter. Yeah, it doesn't really work that way. It's a winter Gunny Sax dress. So it's going to be snowflakes and all sorts of stuff. I don't know if that's going to be my very next project after this one, or if it will just be coming soon, because I kind of have an itch to do another historical project as well. So we'll see how those slot in. But today, Gunny Saxmas. So I want to start out by showing you the fabrics that I got for this project because I'm super excited about them. I had actually decided on those wintry fabrics first and then I turned the corner at Joann's and I found this. These adorable little deers. They are so freaking cute and I have also since learned after purchasing this fabric that Joann's actually sells little like tabletop deer that are the deer on this so I think that purchase may be in my future. I have not gotten them yet because they're not at my closest one they're at the next closest one so we'll see if I get over there but this is going to be the fabric of the main bulk of the dress so this is going to be as far as I have planned in my head so far, I haven't really sketched this out, but this is going to be like the under bodice fabric and the main skirt fabric, possibly a ruffle and possibly the sleeves, but I haven't decided about the ruffle or the sleeves for sure yet, but this is the main fabric I got. It's like five and a half or six yards. I can't quite remember. And I got it on Black Friday. So this was quite a deal. Actually, all of this Christmas fabric was bought on Black Friday. And uh, yeah, that's a great time to buy Christmas fabric. It was all like 50% off, I think. Good, good deal for all these. So that was fabric number one. Fabric number two, I mentioned during Gunny Saxween that I wanted to do a separate bodice over the top. And then I just ran out of time. So that is my plan. For this because I found this wonderful sort of rust colored velvet on the clearance table at Joann's and it's a cotton velvet. It was really inexpensive. I think after a coupon it was like six dollars a yard. So I got I think just one yard and I hope to make a little sleeveless bodice that will go over this dress but this coordinated so well with the deers and with this next fabric that I just had to give it a try to do the velvet bodice as well. So this is the next fabric. This is kind of my trim fabric. I'm planning to do bands of this around the bottom of the skirt, but like above the ruffle, possibly as like other trim, like on the cuffs. Haven't quite decided where all of the colors are going with this, but it's just this lovely, it's like a bias plaid as in all of the plaid is on the diagonal on the bias. So it was just really, really cute. It's a printed cotton plaid. And I thought that it went super, super well with these two. And it's also perfect match for this velvet so I thought that went super well together and then the one other fabric that I'm not positive if I'm going to use I just thought that I needed a little sparkle is this peppermint twist fabric which coordinates really really well as well with everything it is slightly more red than this velvet and then the plaid but I think that it still goes well and I love that it has like a glitter sparkle through and it coordinates really nicely with the deer so I'm not positive if I'm going to use this or not if I do it's going to be for things like the ruffle 
maybe the sleeves. So we'll see. Otherwise, I'll do those out of the deer fabric because I did get enough of that. But I'm super excited for all of this. So let's go ahead, dive in. I think I'm going to do a pretty similar pattern to last time because I love the gunny socks ween dress that I made. So other than things like making that bodice, I think that it's going to be fairly similar, which is good because I saved that pattern. So I'm going to go cut things out and get to sewing. So I have cut out the skirt pieces for the gunny sacks dress, but I decided that I would try to see with the Barbie bodice if I could turn that into my bodice for this dress. I didn't want to use the one from the last time because if you remember the gunny sacks ween dress, it had like instead of princess seams, regular princess seams, it just kind of had a panel like this. And I wanted princess seams. The Barbie dress had princess seams, so it was on my table, but it was built to go over corset. And, um, yeah, it, it doesn't, it doesn't close at all. Like, of course it uh, makes a big difference. So what is going on here is that the back actually, I think fits almost totally fine. Uh, it's this panel in particular that is completely off and it's only off below the bust point, like to about right here at the bust point, it is fitting fine, which is why it's closing at the top. But right here, all of a sudden this is curving back where it should go basically straight down. So it's not quite going to work. And it means like, I don't know, I'm really tempted to just like cut a bigger version of this, but I know that I should mock it up again with the actual plus that will allow me to fill in the actual neckline because this gunny sack bodice is going to have a neckline that's probably about like here. And then I really like the kind that almost has like a little stand collar in the back, but I feel like they're cut in one, not as a separate collar. And I'm not positive how to do that because I don't have a pattern like that. But I was just thinking like, maybe if I cut it really, really high up the neck, it will almost do that just on its own because it's literally like the smallest stand collar that ends about right here and then just goes into this little scoop scoopish neck and that's what I want out of this because it's winter so I figured that would be cute and it would also look cute I feel like with the velvet bodice over so that's where I'm at I need to redo at least the front of this I mean I should redo the back too because obviously it's a totally different neckline but I really don't want to cut another mock up. So I might try cutting the lining for this and see if that will work. Change of plans. Why reinvent the wheel? I just put Gunny Saxoween on, obviously. And the seam, I was thinking the seam was closer in, but the seam is right along this first velvet, which means that it is a princess seam. It's going right over my bust point, so therefore. That's like the nature of a princess seam, right? That's what that means. And I mean, it is curved, like this is the piece. So it is curved. It's just not curved nearly as much as the other one because I'm not curved nearly as much as the other pattern when I'm not wearing a corset. So that makes a lot of sense. So yeah, I think I'm just gonna go with this pattern. I already knew I was gonna use this pattern for the sleeves. I'm using really, really close to this for the skirt. I don't know if the ruffle is gonna be as full and the skirt is also, I've cut the panels a little bit shorter than this one. This one, I think I cut like 25 inch panels and I have cut 23 and a half inch panels. And that is because A, I am planning to make the ruffle probably a little bit shorter. And B, I'm going to have that contrast band going in here of the plaid. So, I mean, I just don't need as much length as this. But yeah, otherwise it's mostly gonna be the same. I'm probably even just gonna keep the same neckline because like, it's here, it's done. The one thing I do wanna do is make it just maybe a little bit tighter. I did buy a zipper for this one. So I have a zipper, I could put it in, you know, I don't want to, but I could. Um, but yeah, I'll probably make this a little bit tighter on the sides just so it's a little more fitted because my one issue that I've had with this dress is that if I'm not wearing the belt, like I'm not right now, then I feel the weight kind of falling from my boobs because that is where it's fitted. And right here, it's not fitted enough to like actually sustain the weight without a belt on. So that's why I think I need it to be a little tighter because even just doing that, I'm feeling the weight coming from my waist and not my boobs. So yeah, I think I need probably about what was that like 1.5 or two inches out of here. So I'll just probably curve that off the side seams a little bit. And I'll be good to go. Yesterday, I was able to cut out 
all of these pieces from the reindeer fabric and I also went and I cut out the bodice in cotton sateen as well so that wound up getting flat lined to the reindeer fabric I just used the serger for that all of the skirt pieces and everything have also been serged that pile consisted of five skirt pieces and four pocket pieces two sleeves and five bodice pieces and for all of that I was using the gunny sacks ween stuff so it was nice I didn't have to like redraft other than what I already talked to you about the one thing is that um you might realize that what I did not mention that I cut out were the skirt ruffle pieces because I'm out of fabric so yeah so originally when I bought the fabric, I thought that I bought enough of the reindeer fabric to cut out the ruffle, but I had also had as a possibility to do the ruffle out of that green with the peppermints fabric. But then I was just kind of like holding up the fabrics on the form. You can see some of them are actually still there. And I was holding them up together and did a little piece of like the peppermint or just kind of held it up as the ruffle. And I was not loving it. Like the red on the peppermint really is a true red, whereas everything else is kind of a little bit more of an orangey red or a rust red. I think you can tell that, especially with the velvet and the plaid that are back there on the form. They're just a lot more orange toned than the peppermint. And so the peppermint, I just wasn't loving it. It was just a little too bright and everything else was a little bit more muted. The only thing is that now, of course, I'm out of the reindeer fabric. Now, they do have more of the reindeer fabric at Joann's, so I may wind up just going and getting more of it and doing the ruffle out of that because I do think that that is really what I want. But I figure I will sort of give myself a chance to see if I like the peppermint fabric with the rest of everything more put together. So I'm not doing the velvet bodice this week, this video, that's going to be in the next video, but everything else, I kind of think I might be able to put together most of it today. Knock on wood. <laughs> that might be totally wrong, but basically my plan today is to put together first the skirt pieces which are those five skirt pieces um plus the pockets going in pockets again are going to be kind of more like here ish I'm trying to remember exactly how I arranged everything last time but I oh wait no this one they're a little bit farther back that's what it is because there's I think I did three skirt panels and then I did pockets and then two, I can't remember, I'll have to look at my other dress, but I remember them not being exactly centered because there are five pieces. And there's five because I didn't want a center front seam, but I wanted pockets, you know, somewhere around here-ish. So yeah, that is, that's why there's five. And so I'm going to assemble all of that. I also already cut out strips for the bottom of the skirt. It won't be the very bottom, it will be in between this the skirt and the ruffle and these I just ripped them so they are on the grain because I really like how this is a diagonal plaid I really like that but you know I should have gone with a regular plaid because then I could have done these on the bias because the skirt hem is curved and I'm putting on straight pieces onto a curved skirt hem yeah I know it's it, it might not work, but we're going to try it. These all have to be pressed with the edges because they are ripped. And when you do that, you get all these ripply sort of edges there. Then they can be sewn together on the short ends. And then I'm going to serge them all as one big strip. I should only need five because I believe it's the same width as the reindeer fabric. I just don't know if that curve is going to mean that I'm going to need like a little bit more. So I ripped five of these and this will also be the same fabric for the cuffs. And I think I'm going to do a waistband out of this fabric too. Haven't completely decided and the waistband will wind up being top stitched. So although I could incorporate it into the seam where the skirt comes together, I could also just completely top stitch it which I might do because then I can wait until everything is together to decide if I want that sort of decorative waistband. My one thing why I'm maybe not sure about the waistband is because with the bodice I don't know if it will lace completely close the velvet bodice and I feel like it would be weird to see green 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 red right there so that's why I'm not positive about 
doing the lace band or not. So otherwise though everything is cut out. I do hope to get the bodice put together today. The sleeves should be super super easy. They are just gathered sleeves. The only like challenging-ish bit will be the cuff. Um, so yeah I'm hoping to knock out a whole bunch of this project today and we shall see. So I now have my bodice assembled, my skirt assembled and all gathered up at the top with the pockets in and everything, and I have my sleeves done up with the side seams, and now I get to assemble all of the pieces to each other. But before I put the bodice on the skirt, I would rather put the sleeves on the bodice. And before I put the sleeves on the bodice, I want to put the cuffs on the sleeves. So I went and I looked at what I had done for the Gunny Socks Ween cuffs, and they are five inches wide by the width of my hand, basically, or the circumference, I guess, of my hand around. Um, and I did, and five inches wide is folded plus seam allowance is taken out. So really they are a finished two inch wide bit. And I did not interface those. However, I had the velvet ribbon on there to give it the stiffness. I am not utilizing a velvet ribbon on these cuffs. And so I'm kind of thinking I should probably interface them. I don't know. I hate interfacing. I just always do. But on something like a cuff, I feel like that's probably going to be important. So I think I'm going to cut those and do fusible interfacing to those and put them together that way. And once I gather the bottoms of the sleeves into the cuffs and finish the cuffs and everything, then I can gather the tops of the sleeves and set them into the bodice. And at that point, then I can look at putting the bodice on the skirt. I don't think I'm going to do the finishing on the neckline yet because that's part of my question mark of like, what do I want to finish it? Like, I'm kind of almost wondering, do I want to echo the plaid? Or if I wind up using the peppermint, do I want to echo the peppermint? So I'm going to wait for the finishing, but I can get these cuffs and sleeves and put it on the bodice, put the skirt on that, and we'll see where we go from there. So while I was working on the cuffs and interfacing the cuffs, I also went and put together all of my strips for the skirt. So there are five of these strips total. Again, I don't know if that'll be quite enough. And I did a pretty good job matching the plaids too. You can't even see that. I'm excited about that. And they have all been searched and are ready to go. But I remembered that I actually have to leave the skirt to hang out for a little bit too, to see if the hem drops. So I can't actually put this on until at least tomorrow. I have finished the first sleeve cuff and it's very cute but it just felt kind of like it was lacking something so I went and I was looking at trims and I have this like little super narrow vintage lace and it is just like perfect on there but that is the most annoying area to sew because this doesn't fit around my free arm so I have to like generally work like basically from the inside of the cuff, whether I turn it right side out or turn it inside out, you know what I mean. I have to have the cuff like here and the foot of the machine here. So I have a very, very small working space. And so putting this on by machine might be a super pain. I'm almost wondering if it's worth doing by hand, but I do feel like it looks really cute and it kind of brings a little extra to that. So I think I'm probably going to add it. I'm almost tempted to like, hmm, what would it look like if I had two of them on? Like one at the bottom of the cuff and one at the top of the cuff. Would that be too much? I can't really make it lay nicely. Um, too much. Too much, I think. But the one at the top is really cute. Is that better than one at the bottom? Oh yeah, much better than one at the bottom. One at the top is the winner. So yeah, I um, might do that. <laughs> if I do it by hand, then it doesn't matter if I put everything all together. If I do it by machine, I should definitely do it before I do anything else with this sleeve. I still have to do the other cuff, but this one did go together quite nicely and fits very well. And I just think it's like super winter lodge vibes and I like that so yeah I'm very happy with this so far and I'm going to probably put the other cuff on and then put the sleeves on the bodice and I think that will probably be it for tonight I'll attach the skirt to the bodice later but I'll have them hang out on the form um, overnight at least so that that skirt can hang out and get ready for the trim band to be put on tomorrow 
Well, I wound up staying up about an hour after I was supposed to stop, but the sleeves are done. I've even put the lace trim around the cuff, which I think looks so, so cute. I did it by machine, not by hand. So it's not like the neatest because it was just really hard to work with this much space basically by the needle, but it's fine. If it really bothers me, I can fix it. I think it's fine. And then sleeves are on. The other thing that I have pretty much decided on is I had held up a bit of the skirt uh, plaid right here to the waist and I really like the way that that looks on the waist and I had also done a little bit of the plaid just like as a trial right up here kind of as binding along with the waist and I thought that looked really cute and I'll probably put a little bit of the lace from the cuff right along here as well so I think I'm gonna do kind of like a double fold bias tape type of this up here I know that by doing a bias tape it is going to wind up being not the diagonal it's gonna wind up being straight because it's bias printed plaid but I think it's going to be really, really cute together. It is so lodge. Like, I don't know if there's such a thing as lodge core, but like, if there is, I think this is going to be it. It's like a Christmas lodge threw up on this dress. And I think with the velvet bodice, it's also going to be super, super cute. And I have decided also not to use the peppermint. It is just it's a little too bright of a green and it is way too red of a red. So I am going to call Joanne's tomorrow and make sure that they still have the four yards that they had yesterday. The closest Joanne's to me says it has four yards. The next closest says it has 11 yards. So I know that'll be fine. And actually the next closest one has something else that I kind of want to go with this dress to, which I'm going to not mention. So I may actually just take the 20 minute each direction way and go to that Joann's and get more of this for the ruffle and also the surprise thing that you will see at some point in this video if I manage to get one. Anyway, that's it for me tonight. I will see you guys tomorrow. So I ran out to Joann's today after work. Naturally, it was one of the farther ones from my house because on my way to the closest one, I called them to ask about the four yards of fabric that they supposedly had in stock of this reindeer fabric, and they couldn't find it. So I drove the half hour to a different Joann's and got this fabric, and it has just come out of the dryer, and now I just kind of want to wear it because it feels very nice. But I had got two and a half yards, so that will be enough to cut all of the ruffle layers out of. First, though, I do want to attach the skirt, which has been hanging out on the form since yesterday. I want to attach that to the bodice and put the zipper in. Try it on, make sure the waist is right, then put the zipper in and put the plaid bit around the skirt once I double check that the skirt length is the same everywhere. So it'll be a little bit until we get to this nice cozy warm fabric, but hopefully I will be getting to this tonight. Oh my gosh, you guys, I am loving it so far. The zipper is in, the skirt is attached to the bodice. The skirt looks real short because it doesn't have the ruffles on or anything yet. So <laughs> that's kind of funny. The fit is amazing. I was still able to pull it on with the zipper done up, which is perfect, but the fit is so much better than the Gunny Sacks Ween dress. Like this is perfect fit. I'm in love with it. And it already looks so stinking cute. Like, oh my gosh, I'm so excited for this. So yeah, I'm going to do the waistband that is just like the top stitch waistband out of the plaid. That will be the plaid cut on the straight grain, meaning it will be the diagonal plaid. And then this, I'm still pretty positive I'm going to bind it with the bias of the plaid, which means it will be straight plaid. <laughs> confusing, but yeah, and probably put that little bit of lace trim on there too. The other thing that I'm thinking about doing is having a bow that can like hook on maybe or something to the waistband in the back so that it will look cute either with the bodice or without the bodice. And then I could just like stick a cute bow on there. I feel like that'd be really cute out of the plaid. So yeah, I'm super excited for this. I have to measure the skirt length to see if it dipped down anywhere. And if so, even that out, and then I can stick the plaid on there. And I guess I could also just go ahead and bind off the neckline and do the waistband while I'm at it too. So the waistband, I'm just going to take a strip, straight strip, and fold in the edges and then just top stitch. So super, super easy there. 
So I have the waistband on and I have the trim around the neckline and I'm just looking at putting the lace on now to see if I like it. And honestly, I'm not loving it this way, but flipping it over this way, I definitely like it better. I'm just not sure, A, the best way to sew it down and B, if I actually like it there or if it just brings it into a level of kind of like a little bit pajama-y like ladies night dress type. Over here at the cuff, the little circle part does face up into the plaid too, which is why I think I'm liking it this way better because it's kind of echoing that and it's giving the softer scallop line right along the plaid. But yeah, hmm, I just, I don't know if I'm liking that. I like the white or like the ivory because that's what this is. This is totally off white, but I don't know. I think I like it better without. I'm thinking without. So I'm going to wait on that. But it is the end of the night for me tonight. So this is what I got done today. It is attaching the dress together, the skirt to the bodice, putting the zipper in, doing the waistband top stitching, which I quite like how that turned out. I think that looks very nice and neat and doing the binding of the neckline. So all that's left is the skirt band and skirt ruffle. And I guess if I decide on this and a hook and I to be hand sewn on at the top. And then if I want to do that bow and then of course next video is going to be the velvet bodice to go with it. Okay, I think I changed my mind. I just put it on the form and I pinned the lace on and it actually does look really, really cute and picks up the cuff down here as well. So yeah, I think I'm just gonna go ahead and sew the lace on tomorrow as well. Do you ever like pull your hair up first thing in the morning and then you finally go and do all your makeup and stuff and bring your hair back down and touch it and just realize how gross it feels. Uh, that is what's going on right here right now. So it's actually been a couple of days since I last checked in with you on Gunny Saxmas and that was because I've had gigs for the last two days and a holiday party yesterday. So for the gigs I went and I did a wet set on my hair and I did like a 50s kind of brush out whatever and then yesterday for the second gig the brush out didn't have enough of it left so I went and put the top up in victory rolls and left the bottom in the curls and so this has so much product in it and is just so yeah and I should have washed my hair today and I didn't anyway today is Saturday and I am determined to finish the gunny socks mistress so what's going on first is I'm going to put the trim around the neck because I decided I did really really like the lace trim on the neck and then I'm going to make sure that the skirt is level all the way around and put the band on it and also then make the ruffle for the bottom. I haven't even actually cut out the ruffle yet, so that has to get cut out. There's going to be 10 pieces, I think, all together if I do it the same as I did for my gunny socks ween dress, which is my plan. And that means that there are two ruffles to every one panel on the skirt. So that is the plan. I have to cut out 10 of those ruffles and sew them all together, hem them, serge the top, and put them on the dress. So I've got quite a bit of work to do today and I have about mm, four and a half hours to do all of that because I'm going to go see a show tonight. So let's get working. The lace is now sewn on around the neck and the band is now sewn on around the bottom of the skirt and so it is time to start the ruffles. All of these ruffles I have cut or I'm ripping to 8.75 inches wide and then the length of the fabric long and I will be pressing them and surging the edges and seaming them all together and doing a hem and I'll show you what it looks like when it's on the dress. Well, here it is, 6.30, time to get ready to leave to go see the show and I was hoping to wear the dress to the show but you might notice there's no ruffle on the dress because the ruffle is right here. 
it is all ready to be sewn to the dress. I've run the gathering stitches. They just need to be pulled up. I still have to mark the bottom of the hem on the dress for where I match up the markings on here too, which means that I have to mark every quarter mark of each panel, if that makes sense. So each panel will have four markings, including one of the seams. So it'll be like the seam and then halfway and then quarter of the panel. And these, I've marked the halves of each of these. So each one of these ruffle panels will take up half of one of the skirt panels. So I guess I will be doing that tonight when I get home and not wearing this dress to the show. Oh well. So the ruffle is now on, but then I got it into my head that lace would be kind of cute too. So I think I'm going to add more of the same lace that is up here at the neck and at the cuffs and put that along the bottom of the skirt. I do want to measure it to make sure that I have enough first because I haven't actually done that. I think I do. Don't pay attention to my messy's floor. And uh, yeah, once I put the lace on and it does need a hook and eye at the back of the neckline over the zipper, then it will be completely done for this week. I do still have to make the velvet bodice to go over the top of it. you guys I seriously love this dress so much already it's kind of a bummer that it's only less than a week at this point when I have finished this until Christmas because I want to wear this always I seriously I feel like some sort of a Christmas storybook princess I don't know what's going on here but it makes me super super happy and to be perfectly honest if I hadn't already bailed on making the bodice for the Gunny Saxoween dress, I would probably bail on it this time too because I really really like it as is and I kind of can't imagine that I'm going to like it even more with the bodice. But because I already bailed on that, I am determined to make a velvety bodice. Plus this one's going to be like this red orange color, which I don't have anything like that. So at least it's something new in my wardrobe. But that is going to be next week's video. So I will do like a full reveal, I feel like, for next week when assuming that the weather is okay with that when I will have like the full outfit and everything going but I wanted to at least give you like that little teaser kind of today so that you could see the dress at least in action even if it's not the full full outfit. So anyway I love this. I hope that you will be back next week. If you liked this video though, please do go ahead and click the thumbs up icon. And if you'd like to see more videos like this from me, please go ahead and click subscribe and the little bell icon to be notified every time I post a new video. I do post videos here on YouTube twice a week with my sewing vlogs like this out on Tuesdays and other costuming content out on Saturdays that I post every day over on my Instagram. So please go follow me on Instagram. That's at Lady Rebecca Fashions. And if you'd like to help support all of the work that I do on this channel, I do have a link to my Patreon and my Ko-fi down in the description below. I'd also like to give a special shout out to my Edwardian level patrons, Sharon and Julie. Thank you all so, so much for joining me today. I hope you all have a wonderful holiday if you celebrate, and I will see you very, very soon in my next video. Happy sewing!